Greetings, greetings, everyone. Welcome again to Sabbath School Live. Midweek class. Welcome again to Sabbath School Live. Midweek class. Shalom, everybody. Shalom is Papa. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Salah, salawa. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Blessed be the name of the Most High Sovereign. He is sovereign. He's the Almighty. He's the Great I Am, the Ayah, Asha, Ayah. And we bless His holy name tonight. Welcome again, welcome again, welcome again. Welcome again to Sabbath School Live, YouTube family. Welcome again, bless His holy name, for being with us in another midweek time, midweek worship. Praise Yah. We give glory and honor to the Most High. He is the Almighty. We thank Him for the election the election of his grace we thank him for the power of his might most of all we thank him for choosing us praise God he didn't have to choose us, uh, but he did so we magnify him in every essence of that way praise God we got good study tonight we're gonna actually finish up uh, what we started on Tuesday night in our iron sharp and iron class uh, effective prayer effective prayer, effective prayer. It is very, very vital that we understand the vitality of prayer, the vitality of prayer. Um, when you pray, that is your communication no line unto the most high. And when the word is spoken, that is the way he speaks unto you. So when you pray, your effectiveness of your prayer depends upon your communicational connection. It's almost like I like to draw the um the the the, the alliance to uh, um Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi. You know, if you don't have good Wi-Fi, don't have good connection, there's no clarity in what you're trying to view. There's no clarity in what you're trying to portray. There's no clarity in your communication. So prayer is a connectivity that has to be effective because it's like Wi-Fi. It has to have you have to have that connectivity. Um, as we start, Father, we thank you tonight for your goodness and your mercy, your loving kindness tonight. We thank you for the move of the Ruach Hakadash, how you allowed us to work all day long, and you brought us in without any hurt, harm, dangers. Even though we've seen accidents, even though we've seen different things, oh Yah, you protected us, and we glorify and say Toda. Toda Yah, thank you this evening for protecting us, keeping us all day long, keeping us all week long. Hallelujah. You've been our strength. You've been our buckler. You've been our shield. And we glorify your name tonight, Heavenly Father. Father, we ask you to continually move tonight, not by might, nor by power, but by your rock, Hakadash, your Holy Spirit tonight. Move tonight, Father. We ask this in your great name. We decrease tonight, hallelujah, that you may increase. We decrease, hallelujah, that you may increase, oh yeah, that you may speak through these lips of clay, Father, yeah. Hallelujah, continue to do as you said in Psalms 138 and 8, perfect those things concerning us. Help us to continue to press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling, which is in your house, Shah Hamashik, Yeshua the Messiah. Father, let your will be done all day, every day, in no other kind of way. And we will be so careful tonight to give your name praise, glory, and honor. Remember those who are sick. I say a special prayer tonight for my brother, Dion Jackson, hallelujah, as he's dealing and battling with the COVID, hallelujah, plague. Father, I pray that you heal him tonight, Father. Hallelujah, heal him, oh yeah. And if there's anything that is done in his life does not like you, Yah. Please forgive him of his sins. Forgive him of his iniquities, oh Yah. Father, have mercy upon my brother and my friend tonight, Father. Father, heal him with your healing virtue because you can and you will. You are Yahweh Rapha. We pray for all those that are dealing with COVID on tonight. We spread, we say a special prayer tonight. Ask them for healing virtue. Hallelujah. In the land on tonight. Heal tonight, Father. We ask this in your holy and righteous name because you can and you shall. You are Yahweh Rapha. You are the Elohim of healing, the sovereign of healing, or as the church world will call the God of healing. We know that you are who you are. You are Ayah, Asha, Ayah. And you are able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. We ask you to bless your people tonight. Bless your people everywhere. Strengthen them on tonight. 
Keep them, O Yah. Keep them in perfect peace as they keep their minds stayed on you. These things we do pray and we ask in and for your name's sake. In the name of Yahweh Shah, Yahushua, Yahshua the Messiah, our soon and coming King, we pray. And we say tonight, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Yah be praised, Yah be magnified, Yah be glorified. Blessed be the name of Yahweh, the Most High, because he is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, our Yah is worthy to be praised. And we bless his name tonight. We bless him tonight. We believe, we know that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them which diligently seek him. We know that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them which diligently seek him. Bless his name tonight. We thank y'all for everyone that's on tonight, everyone that's on the line tonight. Hallelujah. Uh, again, we're not discouraged by the numbers because we realize we're teaching things that a lot of people ain't teaching what we're teaching. A lot of people are not dealing with what we're dealing with. Only a few is only a few is chosen. A lot of this religious stuff, a lot of people is going to perish anyway because they're part of the great falling away. So we're not really locked in the numbers, but we thank y'all for you all that are here with us tonight. Praise y'all. Hallelujah. Let's get on into the study tonight. Prayer, 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 prayer. As a point of review, um, as we begin to study the other night, what prayer really, really is and what prayer really is all about. We have to understand, first of all, prayer, um, it comes from the word. It's two different fashions of prayer. Uh, you have what is called the uh, the uh, epwa, epwa, or the uh, spell e p w t a w. That's Hebrew, epwa. Or you have what is called the erotel, 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 e r o t a o. And both of those mean to ask a question. To ask a question. So many times when people pray. They're asking a question. We always say, Father, we ask this in your name. Now, remember, asking a question and asking for favor is two separate things. Asking a question and asking a favor. In other words, Father, will you please, will you heal us? Will you heal us? Is it your will to heal us? Is it your will to deliver us? Is it your will to bless us? That's asking a question. Now, that's, that's again, EPWA, E-P-W-T-A-W, E-R-O-T-A-O, a rote tale, a rote tale, which means in prayer, it means praying by asking a question. That's the Hebrew word, EPWA, and e uh in Hebrew, which means to ask a question. Now, when you're asking, most people, when they're praying, like I prayed tonight, for my brother, uh, Deion Jackson, I pray for him tonight. I'm asking favor from Yah. And when I'm praying, when you're asking favor, most of the time when you're asking favor, you're asking for either deliverance, healing, a breakthrough, or you just need some strength, some strength. Remember, he is our strength. He is our strength and he is our strong tower. So when we're praying, you know, and it's, under, it's, it's it's very imperative that we understand the distinction between the two, because many times we're praying, but we're not praying for the right thing. We're not praying for the right and correct thing. So henceforth, what happens is we end up having prayers that are ineffective. So tonight, the purpose of this study tonight is to get us to the point of understanding prayer and how to have effective prayer. Scripture says you ask, but you ask amiss. In other words, you you asking, but you are asking for something that is not the will of Yah for you, for you, for you. That's why, that's why the old saying always says, be careful what you ask for, because you just may get it. <laughs> the question is, can you handle it? So again, when we're dealing, when we're dealing with prayer, we're dealing with prayer. We have to understand there's two different distinctive ways of praying. The first way, again, is called epwa, a roteo, which means you're asking a question. Father, 
Can I be delivered? Father, will you save me? Father, is it your will that this be, that be, and the other thing be? That's called again, eptwa or eroteo, which means I'm asking the most high a question. Father, what is your will concerning us as far as eliminating ourselves out of this society, away from this vaccination, away from this mark of the beast? What is your will, Father? What is your will, Father? That's that's called eptwa. You're praying, asking a question. Eptwa or erotel. You're asking a question. Now, when you're praying for results, watch this, y'all. You're doing something called a two, a i t e w, a two or a t o. A-I-T-E-O. It's either A-I-T-E-W, I mean, sorry, A-I-T-E-W or A-I-T-E-O, a two or a T-O, which means in Hebrew, it means in Hebrew, you're asking for favor. Asking for favor. So you have to understand the things, things between the two because many times we're asking a question in our prayers when we should be asking for favor in our prayer. In other words, yeah, you see what I stand in the need of. I need the oh yeah to bless. I got a situation on myself and I'm praying and I realized I was asking a question. Yeah, is this, you gonna help me or, you know, no, no, stop asking questions and start praying for favor, asking in favor. Father, I need thee and I need you to please do this for me. I need you to heal, hallelujah, my brother. Do that for me. I need you to deliver my family. Do that for me, yah. In other words, that word, that particular portion of prayer, again, is a two or a T-O. A two or a T-O in Hebrew means you're asking for favor. Asking for favor, asking for favor. And, 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 and when you begin to ask for favor, you find yourselves in connection with the creator himself, the prayer answerer himself. So many times we praying and we're praying amiss. See, I'm, 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 I'm done with trying to get into all this deep stuff, all this deep stuff, because we, we, we've been teaching in deep stuff. My, my my mission, according to what Yah has given me now, is to bring us to the basis of how to become saved. We need deliverance as a people. We don't need identity. We don't need uh, 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 just to know his name. No, let me just say that correctly, because I, I know some people going to come around me and say, what? We don't just need identity as Hebrews. We don't just need identity as uh, knowing the name of the creator. We need to know not just his name, but we need to understand how he operates. We need to understand, hallelujah, how he moves. Remember, he, not by might, nor by power, but by the Rorak, the Ruach, Hakadash, Hakadash. What does that mean? Does anybody really know what that means? Not by might, nor by power, but by the Rorak or the Ruach. Hakadash. Does anybody really know what that means? We quote these things, but we have no clarity in what these things mean. Why? Because our minds are so here, our minds are so there. What that means is when we say not by might, nor by power, might and power manifest physical attributes. We don't need physical attributes. Hallelujah. That's why the scripture says, who's a Hebrew? He which is one outward or he which is one inward. We don't need physical attributes. People teaching physical attributes. People teaching uh, things that has no validity concerning your soul. Hallelujah. I'm not trying to be funny and I'm not trying to be mean, but I could care less what happened back in slavery. I could care less. I could care less. 
about what's going on in this world. What I want to understand is the antics of what's going on. So when we're dealing with that, what that means is not by might nor by power, but by your Rarak HaKadosh. Remember this. Amos 3 and 7 says, Surely Yahweh will do nothing, but he reveals his secrets unto his servants, the prophets, the prophets, the prophets. He reveals his secrets. So, so do we see this? Do we see the revelation? Do we see the revealing? No. So when you say not by might, nor by power, but by the Rarak, HaKadosh, watch this, y'all. You're saying, y'all, and you're praying, y'all, and you're interceding, y'all, and you're supplicating with y'all, watch this, y'all, that he move not by what we see, not by what we see him doing, but we asking him, we're asking him, with a tool, a T-O, in Hebrew, him, asking him to move in the invisible. Move in the invisible. When I just prayed for my brother, shalom, shalom. When I just prayed for my brother and my friend that I've been knowing since we were little kids, the prayer was not for fashion or form. But it was to summon Yahweh to move in the invisible. Move in the invisible. See, we keep we keep trying to do things physically. And see, this is why people, people ain't gonna flock to this type of ministry. And let me tell y'all something. I ain't going nowhere. If it ain't nobody but two or three people on here, guess what? We're gonna teach. Guess what? Because only eight people were saved. During the time of Noah's ministry. And he said as the son. He said this. He didn't say there's going to be no whole bunch of awakening. He said there's going to be a whole bunch of people. He said, as the, he said as the days of Noah was. So shall the second coming. Of the son of man be. We got nothing but a bunch of wishy-washy people out here on Facebook anyway. None of them have no stability. All of them think they know everything what they know. But they don't know nothing. But Yah is calling for us to come into him with effectiveness. And the first step of effectiveness is effective prayer. Again, you either go etu, etio, etu, etio, and Hebrew means pray asking for favor. Or you're going to ekwa, or ereteo in Hebrew. Which means you're asking a question. Hallelujah. And a lot of times I, I, I find myself today. Hallelujah. I find myself today. Ereteo. Ereteo or eptoa. I find myself in Hebrew praying, asking Yahweh. For question. I say, yeah, I don't understand things that I'm seeing. I don't understand the mindset of your people. Yeah, could you help me understand? I begin to ereteo. I begin to eptoa. Which in Hebrew means to ask, pray by asking a question. I begin to ask the most high questions. Because my mind said, I don't understand the mindset of your people. So I began to pray. And I began to arete o. I began to ask the Father questions. Questions. And y'all, just now in the Word, just begin to say, listen, why are you troubled? The Ruach just spoke this to me right now. Why are you troubled? Did not I tell you that in the latter days, men will not endure sound doctrine? Did not I tell you, Jeremiah, hallelujah, I, I, I feel the prophecy of Yah. Did not I tell you 
that there will occur a great falling away. Hallelujah. Did not I tell you that the concept or the understanding of me is taught by the precept of man and mankind? Did not I tell you that in the latter days, Men will be lovers of them own selves more than the lovers of me. Did not I tell you that people will begin to worship the creature? Y'all, excuse me, because Yahweh was prophesying. Did not I tell you that people will begin to worship the creature more than the creator? Henceforth we have non-effective prayer. Non-effective. Prayer. Hallelujah. So now, let's look at this thing. Let's look at this thing. Go me to uh, Luke, the 18th chapter. And we're going to look at verse number one, Minister Chico. Then we're going to go to Hebrews, the 11th chapter, and verse number six. And then we're going to deal with Daniel 6, 10 and 11. I'll say it again. The memory verses tonight will be. Luke 18 and 1, Hebrews 11 and 6, Daniel 6, 10 and 11. First of all, before we, before we go into scripture, let's understand what the word effective mean, effective mean, because a lot of times we're hearing cliches and we're hearing different teachings. And the teachings are not being really, have not come forth in full fruition because we don't understand what is being taught. Let's look at the word effective first. Effective. The word effective means successful in producing a desired or intended result. Let me say it again. Successful is being, I mean, effective is being successful in producing a desired or intended result or the fulfilling of a specified function in truth, though not formally acknowledged as such. So prayer has an effective mandate on it, meaning that there is a requirement and expectation that has to be met when we're dealing with prayer. Shalom says, when we're dealing with prayer, prayer has a effective mandate on it. You cannot pray and not receive effectiveness. If there is no effectiveness in your prayers, then you're praying amiss. Amiss meaning that you're off in your praying. And like I said before, many times we're praying Things. Like today, like I said, today I begin to question y'all. Y'all, I don't understand. It seems like this person does this, that person, y'all. I just don't understand, y'all. Help me understand. I begin to ask y'all a question. And over, I begin to, I begin to arrive, a roteo, a in Hebrew mean I begin to ask, I begin to pray asking a question. But when we started the prayer tonight, my brother and my friend is dealing with COVID. So I begin to at two, at two, at two, or a T-O in Hebrew means I begin to pray asking for favor. Now, again, many times when we pray, and I'm going to show y'all this in these scriptures we're about to read. Many times when we're praying, if the prayers are not being answered, 
They're not being answered or they're not effective. Again, the word effective. Again, the word effective means successfully doing a thing and producing a desired or intended result. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because of the word, my expectation is that the effectiveness of our prayers will go forth because we're not praying in self. We're praying unto the problem solver. We're praying unto the healer of healers, the deliverer of deliverers. Most of all, we're praying unto the most high himself. So when we're dealing with effective prayer, prayer, effective prayer is a successful prayer. It's producing, it's productive in every desired or intended way of our desires or, 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 or of our needs. Hallelujah. Oh, bless his holy name. It's the fulfilling function of the fact, listen, I know when I pray that you're not working on it, but because faith is mixed in with the prayer, I know you've already worked it out. Hallelujah. 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 And we have to understand again, are we a tool or a T-O, which in Hebrew means are we asking for favor or are we a rateo or etwa asking a question? And as I'm getting to study this study, I begin to understand. I see now why we're not being effective. We're not receiving results. What do you mean? People are dying. People are not being delivered. People are not being healed. Why? Because we're praying amiss. And we hope tonight, after the night, because we got to understand there's another level that prayer is going to take you to. Oh, hallelujah. I feel the, 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 the rock of y'all. There's another level. Hallelujah. Remember, when we're praying, it's not by might, it's nor by power, but it's by the rock, the rock, Hakadesh, the Holy Spirit. It's not by might. It's not by power, hallelujah, but it's by the rock, Hakadash, meaning that, that Yah is moving, he's working, even when we're sitting still. He's moving, he's working in the prayer, even when we don't understand what's going on. Why? Because he's moving in the invisible, hallelujah. He's moving, hallelujah, in the invisible. Bless you, Dr. J. He's moving in the invisible. See? Everything that we do has a spiritual mandate on it. And a lot of times people don't know what spiritual means. We think spiritual is spazzing out somewhere. We think spiritual is losing our mind. Spiritual only means invisible. Spirit means invisible. That's why he's not a ghost. He's invisible. He's the holy Rock, Hakadash, the Rock, Hakadash. He's the Holy Spirit, meaning that he's whole, he's holy, he's most high, but he's invisible. So when we pray, we have to understand when we pray. Prayer is a weapon, important weapon. And probably the most vital for weapon in spiritual warfare. Hallelujah. That's why I've been kind of laying back a little bit. Because I've been praying more. I've been working more and praying more. Why? Because prayer is one of the most powerful weapons in spiritual warfare. Huh? You know why we get defeated? You know why we get discouraged? Ah, teach. Ah, speak tonight, y'all. Speaker, speaker. Y'all, excuse me, because I feel the prophetic in me coming out. You know why we get this, get defeated? You know why we get discouraged? We get defeated and discouraged because we try to connect 
carnality into spirit. <laughs> Glory to his name. We try to connect carnality into spirit. And Yahweh does not deal in carnality. He said the carnal mind is an enmity. It's an enemy between him. So when we pray a lot of times, we're trying to think, oh, especially when we're praying in group settings. What can I say? Let's just be honest tonight. What can I say to move the crowd? What can I say? To, what can I say? Instead of purely, hallelujah, and holistically going boldly to the throne of Yahweh. Because he has given us access. Huh? He said, anything you pray and ask, whether it's a, a, a two or a teo, meaning by favor, anything you ask, either it's a twa or a rateo in Hebrew, anything you ask in my name, I'll give it to you. As long as it's in the proper order. Hallelujah. It's long teach tonight, y'all, as it's in the proper order. Because watch this. The problem with us is we are praying out of order. And Yahweh said, hallelujah, Yahweh said, hear the word of Yah, hear, hear the prophet speak tonight. Yahweh said, you're praying out of order. He said, have I not said unto you, let everything be done decently and in order, including your prayers. Ha! Huh? Teach tonight, Yah. Have I not said, let everything be done decently and in order, including your prayers? People say, pray for me. I watch it on Facebook. What pray for me? You see people doing this. <laughs> you see people doing putting up symbols like this. What is that gonna do? When somebody's asking you to pray. You know when I see stuff people saying pray? I go into prayer. First thing I do is, I'm learning now to, is I act in prayer. A rotel in prayer. Which means, in Hebrew means, I'm asking y'all a question. And the question I'm asking y'all is, is it your will? Hallelujah. That this be done. Is it your will for this person to be delivered? Is it your will? For this person to be healed. Is it your will to get this thing that they're asking for? They're petitioning for. They're asking us to petition for. Is it your will? So, I, 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 I read or et, or et toi, which in Hebrew means I'm asking a question. And then after, hallelujah, I ask the question. Hallelujah. And the Ruach gives me the answer. And this, this is, I'm trying to show you all how to have effective prayer. After I ask the question now, I'm realizing now, as the rock gives me a, an unction, an unction, y'all can answer, I got an unction from the up above. As he gives me an unction, hallelujah, then I begin to proceed forward and I begin to a tell or a toe, a toe, which means I begin to pray asking for favor. Hallelujah. Asking for favor. And this is why we're not having, hallelujah, effective prayer because Yahweh said we got to learn how to distinguish. We let, he said, let everything be done decently and in order. We keep just praying, praying, putting up these things and all. That stuff means nothing. That stuff holds no power. That's why when we pray, Father, in your name, I ask. This brother, this sister has a request. But I ask, what's your will? Hallelujah. Concerning this matter. What's your will? Because guess what, y'all? A lot of y'all praying amiss and praying in vain. Y'all heal them. And y'all say, listen, they finished their course. Now it's time for them to come home to me and rest in my bosom. As Abraham is. Until that great day of redemption. Teach tonight, y'all. Hallelujah. Because they're dying in me. They're passing in me. And guess what? Death unto me. Death unto y'all is sleep unto me. 
Teach tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to his name tonight. Hallelujah. In, in other words, in other words we, we pray, y'all heal, heal, y'all heal. And y'all say, say, no, 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 no. They finished their course. They, they, they ran a good fight, a good fight. Hallelujah. And it's now time for me to let them rest. Because if I let them live, they may trip up. And not make it into the kingdom. Because the scripture says, how can we escape? If we neglect so great a salvation. So now, so now, when we pray, we got to, first of all, arrange it, oh, we got to ask a question. We got to ask a question. We got to ask y'all a question. Yeah, what's your will concerning this matter? There's a petition that's been placed before me to ask and petition you about. What is your will concerning this? Hallelujah. And then after, you hear from him. Hallelujah. That's why, well, how do I hear from he that have an ear? Let him shema with the rock, kakadash, the rabah, kakadash. It said, now, you know, you got to have an ear. And the only way you can have an ear is you have to have the rabah, kakadash. So, what are you saying? Your prayers cannot be effective unless you have the rock, kakadash. The Ruach HaKadash. The Ruach HaKadash. Hallelujah. Hear him in heaven and let him hear. Let him Shema. Let him Shema. Let him hear with the Ruach. The Ruach. The Ruach is saying unto us, the Spirit. What is the Spirit of Yah saying? Let's be honest. How many times have we consulted Yah? Asking him, what is the Spirit saying? Huh? How many times have we really asked y'all, what is your will? What is your will concerning us? What is your will concerning me, y'all? We want what we want. When we want, how we want. We like spoiled children. And y'all said your prayers are ineffective. So now it's time to bring effective prayer. Now let's look at this. Let's, let's look at these scriptures. Let's look at these scriptures. It's going to take us. Remember. We, we've been teaching on many spiritual things. And the reason why we're teaching on these spiritual things is because there's a lot of spiritual warfare going on. Y'all just don't know. There's a lot of witches out here. There's a lot of warlocks out here. And a lot of times, the only reason that you don't have to deal with them is because you have people, uh, even like myself, that's interceding for you. Huh? That's interceding for us. That's why a lot of times, people, somebody, uh, uh, my sister, uh, my wife called me. My wife is out of town in Ohio, uh, uh, you know, with our family and everything. And she called me. She said, um, my, my sister-in-law uh, sent a message and said, uh, tell my brother that he's doing a great work and, and don't let these people bother, worry him. And I thought about that thing. I thought about that thing. And I had to, I had to go to Yah and I had to ask Yah. I said, Yah, Forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. And the shifting of the atmosphere, when I ask for forgiveness, began to let me see. There's a lot of witches out here. There's a lot of warlocks out here. So we've been teaching on spiritual things like salvation and prayer because it doesn't have a 40 acre and a mule and it's not going to save your soul. From this beast power. A 40 acre and a mule. You getting some money from this government. Is not going to save you from. This beast government power. Huh? People say. Oh. Well, 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 what are you talking about? Well. well I just, do y'all realize. Do y'all realize. That we are. We have been put into a FEMA. Like. Captivity. And we ain't even. <laughs> we prophesied this. A year ago. That this was going to happen. We've been put into a FEMA-like captivity. Huh? A FEMA-like captivity. We've been placed into a position of fear. And the reason why there's fear in the land is because of people don't understand the unknown. Hallelujah. Ask y'all to excuse me because the Ruach HaKadosh is taking over. Hallelujah. The, the people does not understand the unknown. We're so busy chasing after this thing, that thing, and we're missing it. We're missing it. And the reason why we're missing it is because our, we've been distracted spiritually. The spiritual connection in other words, it's buffering 
teach tonight going on in our life. There's buffering going on. You know how it is when you're watching and, and your, 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 your Wi-Fi connectivity start to act up and you're in the middle of a show and all of a sudden you see it buffering and buffering. People are operating buffering. They don't even understand it because they have no clarity. They have no understanding. They have no understanding of what's going on. So now they're living their life in a buffering state. There's no connectivity. There's no clear connectivity to so we can see what's going on. And the reason why there's buffeting going on is because people are worshiping creatures more than the creator. People are worshiping the gift and the gifts more than the giver. Hallelujah. And there's no prayer life. There's no prayer life like it should be. And I'm not speaking, this ain't for everybody. But this is for mass, vast majority. Hallelujah. So, so we have to understand, we're in spiritual warfare. Somebody said, and I've seen some, some things and it cracked me up. I laughed about it. I'm learning how to laugh at things. Because you don't have to prove nothing to nobody that's unproven. Watch this, y'all. Somebody said, well, how can you be teaching that this vaccination may be a part of the mark of the beast? The mark of the beast is the system. La, da, 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 da. I ain't trying to be funny. Have we not seen that the system has its seal on this vaccination? Have we not seen that the system has an underlining mandate that has not been manifested to the natural eye, but the only those who Yahweh have chosen sees this because he says, surely he will do nothing except he reveal his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. Huh? You, you know why you don't, a lot of people don't see this? Because they're not consulting Yahweh. See, Understand this. Yahweh is a sovereign of communication, of connectivity. Let me say it again. The two C's. He's a sovereign of communication and connectivity. In other words, in other words, in other words, when you pray in the Rock HaKadosh, you begin to connect with him verbally. Now, in return, the connectivity continues Without buffering, <laughs> oh, teach the night, y'all. Without buffering, because he begins to speak back unto you. And his only requirement is have an ear to Shema, what he's saying unto you. So let's, let's look at this thing. Uh, Luke 18 and 1. Luke 18 and 1. Hallelujah, y'all. Y'all, excuse me, but, but I, feel, I feel something tonight. I feel, I feel, I feel the presence of Yah. I feel the presence of Yah right now. Even in the midst of this room, I feel him on this line. I feel the presence of Yah right now, not by might nor by power, but by his spirit, by his rock, Hakadash. I feel his presence, hey, glory, in the midst of us right now. I feel his presence. Hallelujah. 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 Look what he said here. Luke, Luke, Luke 18 and 1. When Yahushua, Yahushua, has spoken these words. He went forth. He, I'm sorry, I'm in, I'm in the wrong. I'm in the wrong one. Sorry about that, y'all. Sorry about that, I'm in John. Sorry about that. Hallelujah. Oh, bless his holy name. Thank you, Yah. Thank you, Yah. Uh, listen, listen. And he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought to always pray and not faint. Hallelujah. The adversary's desire is that we stop praying. We stop praying and we start all oh, glory. And that's where we're going. That's right, Dr. J. That's where we're going. We're going to go, in. We're going to go deep into this holies of holies right now. We stop praying and we begin to worry. And Yahweh said, be careful. Be worried. I woke up this morning again. 5, 5.30 a.m. Anxiety attack. Anxiety attack. And 
First thing the adversary tried to attack my mind with was, keep it up. Keep on having these anxiety attacks. You Just like your sister said, you can have a heart attack. Uh, watch this, y'all. Watch this, watch this. Remember this. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. <laughs> but they're mighty through y'all. I, I, I heard my sister, Queen Doreen, Evangelist Doreen say, bro, stop. You better stop worrying. Don't worry about nothing. Don't worry about nothing. That's what she said to me. And I, I, I began to hear that this morning. And immediately I began to pray. Father, I pray. I, I too, I, I tell you, I'm asking for favor. Take this stress up off of me, whatever it is. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Most of y'all. Take this stretch up on me, Father Yah. Take this stretch up on me. And then I begin to speak to that stress, this anxiety. You have no dominion here. You have no power here. This body, this temple belongs unto the most high sovereign Yah. Hallelujah. And immediately, Whatever that anxiety was, whatever that spiritual attack that came upon my body was, it began to leave. Hiya, be alone. Glory to his name. Hiya, hiya. I feel the life of Yah. Hiya means life. I, I begin to feel hiya. I begin to feel life. Come in amongst me. And then after that life, which came through Ra, the Ra, 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 Ra and which is the breath of Yah. Because he began to breathe on me. Hallelujah. In the midst of my prayer, he began to breathe on me. Hallelujah. And I began to feel the haya. I began to feel the life. And as the life began to come, I began to feel the shalom ah, of Yah come in the midst of the bedroom. Hallelujah. Now, normally when this happened, my wife is laying next to me. But again, she's out of town. So I'm in this bed by myself, you know. In other words, I'm in uncharted waters. See, sometimes, you know, it'll come upon me and I'll reach over to her and, and, and she'll say a silent prayer or, or I'll reach over to her and, and, and I can just feel her vitality. So, I, you, you know, I feel, I feel some help coming on. But, but this time I was by myself huh? and, and, and I began to pray. And I said, Father, you take over this anxiety. I don't know where it's coming from. I don't know what it's all about. But I put it in your hands right now. Hallelujah. You, I put it in your hands right now. And as I began to intercede, I said, Father, 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 have mercy upon me according to your loving kindness, according to your tender mercy. And immediately, the Rawa, the breath of Yah, through the Rua, the Rawa, the spirit of Yah, Begin to intercede on my behalf. Hallelujah. Didn't know what to pray for. Didn't really know what to ask for. I'm asleep. And this thing wakes me up out of my sleep. But guess what? Guess what? I knew what y'all said. Men ought to always pray. In spite of anxiety. In spite of not having what you need. In spite of. Men ought to always pray in spite of where you think you are in your educational level. Men ought to always pray. Hallelujah. And not faint. There's no time to give up. There's no time to turn back. There's no time to throw in the towel. Huh? We're in the fight now. We used to sing a song when I was in church. I'm a soldier in the army of Yah. I'm a soldier. Who uh, glory. Got my war clothes on. Got my war clothes on. Hallelujah. In the army. Hallelujah. Ain't no time to be giving up. We in battle now. We in battle now. And the first point of battle is we have to pray. 
cannot faint. Hallelujah. We got to pray and not faint. Hallelujah. All this other stuff is good. It's good. But do you know how to pray? Or do you know how to reach the Shem I am? The Shem I am. Hallelujah. Do you know how to reach the Shem I am? Got my war clothes on. In the army of Yahweh. If I die, let me die. In the army. Whoa, glory. Hallelujah. We in warfare, y'all. Ain't no play time. It's time to, we got to pray. But we have to pray effectively. Glory to the name of Yahweh. Hebrews 11 and 6. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Hebrews 11 and 6. Hallelujah. Y'all don't go nowhere. Because we great go, we great, we, 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 we great go somewhere. We going somewhere. I feel the rising up of the rock, Hakadash. I feel the rock, Hakadash. Hallelujah. We, 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 we may be in warfare, but, 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 but we're praying. We're praying with the war cry. We may be in warfare, but we're praying with the war cry of triumphantness. Watch this, y'all. Watch this. How do we pray with triumphantness? How do we pray guaranteeing victory? Watch this, y'all. Hebrews 11 and 6. Hallelujah. But without faith. So it is impossible to please him. Who's him? The prayer answer. Rapha, I heal Yahweh, Yahweh, our deliverer. Rohai, our shepherd. Nisi, our banner. Tiskanu, of hosts. I mean, Tessaboth, our host. Elion, the most high. Yahusha, Yahushua, Yeshua Messiah our Savior, and our Deliverer. For without faith, it is impossible to please Him. Aya, Asha, Aya, I am that I am. I will be what you need me to be. Aya, Asha, Aya. It's impossible to please Him. For he that come to Yahweh must believe that He is. He is what? Whatever you're praying him for him to do, either he's going to answer your question or he's going to grant you favor. Healing favor, deliverance favor, provision favor. Just being your standard favor, being your host favor, being your shepherd favor. That he is and that he is a reward of them that Diligently, carefully, consistently, persistently, without fainting, without getting tired, no matter how you feel, seek him. So the first step in effect of prayer is you have to be connected word-wise. Why? Because you cannot have effective prayer without faith. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Yahweh. So you have to have word on the inside of you and not just any old kind of word. You got to have the power of the word on the inside of you. Hallelujah. Why? Because prayer is designed to take you into levels that you've never seen before in your life. Hallelujah. Prayer is designed to bring you into miracles that you have never seen before. Prayer is designed to put you in a position with Yahweh like you've never seen before. Watch this, y'all. Go to Daniel 6. Daniel 6. 
real quick. Let me let me get these memory, memory verses out the way. Daniel 6, because I want y'all to really understand this. Prayer, prayer, prayer. See, I, I'm, I'm tired. I'm not playing no more games. I'm not I'm not out here playing no games. I'm not here out here to keep going. I, we, it, it's time now. We got to be. We got to. This is real. This is real. Because guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Somebody's life is dependent on your effective prayer. Somebody's somebody's mental state is depending on hallelujah. Your, 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 your effective prayer. Watch this. Watch this. Effective prayer. Look at Daniel 6. I'm sorry, Daniel 6, y'all. Verse, let's start, let's look at verse number 10. Verse number 10. We'll start at verse number 10 and we'll read on down to the end. Verse number 10. Daniel 6. Your 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 effectiveness in prayer is dependent upon you. Somebody's dependent upon, and not only that, but your your life is dependent upon your ability to be effective in your prayers. You know, we keep all all this stuff, all the stuff that we learn. Okay, all that stuff is good, but do you know how to pray? Are you praying correctly? Watch this, y'all. Daniel 6, Daniel 6, and start at verse number 10. It says this in verse number 10. Y'all y'all be a little patient with me, praise y'all. It says, now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his, cha and his windows being opened in his chambers towards Jerusalem, and he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave Toda thanks before his Elohim, Elohika, as he did aforetime. time. So in other words, in other words, in other words, Daniel was in the Babylonian captivity and a decree went forth that you're not supposed to pray and y'all, 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 y'all hear me prophetically as I'm speaking right now. You're not supposed to pray unless you pray unto the sovereign or the God or the deity of Nebuchadnezzar. Watch this, y'all. What validity does that have? The validity that it has is this vaccination, this COVID move is moving us into that same position again. Daniel was quarantined. He was quarantined. Watch this, y'all. Can I teach tonight? Can I prophesy and teach at the same time? He was quarantined. And so he was in his quarters. So while being quarantined, he prayed three times a day in the midst of the Babylonian captivity under King Nebuchadnezzar and Darius the king. Watch this, y'all. Now, 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 now. We haven't experienced this yet. But it's going to come a time where you will not be able to seek or call upon the name of the Savior and the Mashiach of Yisrael. This whole thing that we see going on in society is to take away the Mashiach. Hallelujah. And I ain't talking about Jesus. I'm talking about Yahushua. Hamashiach. Yahushua. Hamashiach. Some call him Yahshua the Messiah. I'm not. This thing is set up to take away the Mashiach away from us. They've already put us into FEMA camp type situations. They talking about shutting this thing down for four months. Everything will be mandated and dictated. You know why? Because it has to be. Because the son of perdition is about to be revealed. And the son of perdition is the last, the last, and the prophesied, and the prophetic, watch this, y'all, son of perdition. Not Titus, not Epiphanius, the fourth. 
But the son of perdition is about to be revealed. And there will be a decree. Think about this. Watch this. Revelation 13 said, and the whole world wandered after the beast. The clay. The human leader. The son of perdition. The abomination of desolation. That goes into Jerusalem. And proclaims himself to the entire world. That he is Yahweh. And don't be surprised. That he don't come saying his name is Jesus. Don't be surprised. If he don't come saying his name is Jesus. Huh? Don't be surprised. Because his mandate will be to annihilate and dismantle and speak words of blasphemy against the Elohim, the Eloheka of Yisrael. So that the name of the Most High be no more amongst us. Henceforth, we have to pray and pray effectively. Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. Because the abomination of desolation, spoken about the prophet Daniel, took place twice. Took place actually more than twice, but two major times. But now, there's a greater to come. There's a greater to come. And there will come a decree where eventually, not yet, but eventually, your worship, who you worship, will be challenged. We've already been put in captivity and not even understand and know it. It's thick in the air. Why? Because spiritual wickedness in high places is in operation. So Daniel dealt with that. I just had to get y'all get the, the, the tidy lines. So y'all said, well, that was back then. No, no, no. Let, let's tie it into right now and let's tie it into prophetically. Daniel dealt with that. He prayed three times a day. Verse 11 says, then these men assembled and found Daniel. Remember the word Daniel means Yahweh is my judge. They found Daniel praying and making supplication before his Elohim. Now we know the word supplication means to humbly, honestly seek, ask, and even beg. So I can only imagine, ah, glory to Yah, how Daniel was praying. The scripture says, making supplication, meaning that he didn't care who was outside of his window. He didn't care who heard him pray because he left, hallelujah, he left the atmosphere that he was praying in. And he went up into another level. Hallelujah. Making supplication before his Elohim. Making supplication in the presence of the Most High Yah in prayer. When we talk about effective prayer, effective prayer, you got to shake the room. You got to shake the environment. You got to shake the atmosphere. When you begin to pray effectively, Daniel shook the atmosphere because at that particular time, at that particular moment, he left his body and he went into another ozone. Henceforth, he didn't care who heard him. He knew that there would be consequences and repercussions for him praying, even though the government at that time said, you cannot pray. And if you pray, you better pray unto our God, our deity. Teach it to Yah, hallelujah. But yet he prayed three times. 
not once, but three times. Meaning that he had a continual, continual, re 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 repetitious prayer. He didn't pray three times a week. Scripture says he prayed three times a day. Supplication. Again, the word supplication means that you are making intercession. You are doing in Hebrew what is called tefillah. You are, you are coming before the Most High, humble, honest, begging, requesting, praise God, because you know that you're going to have results at the end of that prayer. Now, we know the story. 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 They brought him up on charges. They put him into the lion's den. And in the midst of putting him into the lion's den, uh, 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 something miraculously happened. See, don't think that we are praying in vain. Don't think we are praying in vain. Daniel had already prayed. He knew what the consequences and the repercussions would be. That's why I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to speak truth. Why? Because the scripture says he has not given us the spirit of fear, but love, power, and sound mind, meaning that, that I'm, I'm communicating with him on a daily and a regular basis. And when you communicate with him on a daily basis, guess what? He begins to speak back to you. He begins to speak. He's not going to let you out talk him. He's not. He's going to reciprocate. He's not going to let you out talk him. So when you pray, guess what? He's going to speak back to you. When you, and this is how you know you in the proper connection. What's happening is a lot of people don't have the proper connection. They have buffering going on, and things are buffering. And because when they're buffering, what's happening is people think they're hearing from Yah when they're not. People think that that Yah speaking through them when He's not. People think that Yahah is approved with what they're doing when He's not. Why? Because they're speaking and they're living from a buffering perspective. They have not gone intercessorily into the presence. of of Yah. Hallelujah. They have not intercede. Enter means that you go into something. They have not entered into the realm that Yah needs them to be in. Daniel, when he prayed, he prayed in another realm. Hallelujah. Y'all y'all stay. Don't go nowhere. Don't go nowhere. Don't go nowhere. Because we great, we're going to go. We're going to get we're going to go a little deeper than this. He's praying in another realm. Look what he said in verse number 22. He had prayed in such a deep realm that he began to Exhort and prophesy to king, to the king. He said, "Ma Yah have sent his Malachim, his angel, and have shut the mouths that they may ha have not hurt me, for as much as before him innocency was found in me, and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt, no words, no words." No word. I've already intercede. I've already to filia. I've already stepped into another realm in my prayer. In other words, I left Babylon physically. I left that room that I was quarantined, hallelujah, into, and I went into the Shemiam. I went into the heaven. And in being in the midst of the heavens while I was in my prayer, my Elohim have shut up the mouth. He showed me in the Ruach, hallelujah, that he shut up the mouth of the lions. He shut up the mouth of the lions. Hallelujah. The lions was roaring, wanted to roar. And it could not roar. Now watch this, y'all. Watch this, y'all. Watch this, watch, 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 watch. Watch this, watch this. Lions was literally, but it was also a it also could be taken from a metaphoric perspective, meaning that it was a type or representation of something. Now watch this, watch this, watch. This. When the sons of Yah appeared before Yah, how Satan appeared there also. Say, where you been? Throughout the earth, roaming to and fro, seeking whom I may devour. Now, when we get into the new writings, the scripture says, for how Satan, the devil, as a roaring lion, is trying to bite and devour. Seeking whom he so 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 now so now the Hebraic was they physically 
had an encounter where Yahweh locked up the lion's mouth. But guess what? Spiritually, through the consistently and the effectiveness of our prayer, guess what? He's locking up the mouth of the lion. That lion that tried to bring me anxiety in the middle, in the late part of the morning, uh, right before time to get up for prayer line. That uh, not, not, I didn't even have to get up for prayer line this morning, but right before the time to get up for work, that, that lion that, that's going to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. Hasetan as a lion. So that same mentality, demonology that was in the lion's den, Guess what? How Satan is doing the same thing roaring throughout the world. That's why I said there's many witches and many witchcrafts out. Witch, witches and warlocks out here that's trying to implement witchcraft upon your life, upon your house, upon your children, upon your households. Hallelujah. So henceforth, we have to have a consistency. So the next step of having effective prayer, you have to have Consistency. Consistency will bring upon effectiveness because eventually your prayers will elevate. Remember we told you on, on yesterday, on the other night, your prayers will elevate. Your prayers become not just surface anymore. They begin to go into another level. It takes you into another level. Your, in other words, it, be, it brings you to another level of praise. And that praise begins to elevate. It's like, a, it's like, like an airplane taking off. It elevates you from, 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 from prayer to take off up to praise. And eventually you rise up into worship. And when you get in worship, you get into a place where you hear Yahweh, you see Yahweh, you believe the Most High. Hallelujah. So Daniel, Daniel said, listen, my Yah, because I already prayed, send his Malachim, the angel, and shut the lion's mouth. That they have not hurt me for as much as before his him innocency was found in me. And also before the O King, I've done no hurt. So in other words, <laughs> in other words, Daniel, through his elevation in prayer, had deliverance given to him. Because he was operating in good, y'all hear this, spiritual credit. Know why a lot of our prayers are not effective? It's because we're trying to pray and operate with spiritual bad credit. No type of prayer line, no, no, no type of line of credit. You have no type, you know, in other words, prayer is your line of credit. You have no type of line of credit. Huh? Or you have inconsistency in your line of credit, no shows, no pays. Huh? So you're operating spiritually huh? with, with spiritual bad credit. So now there's ineffective because guess what? There's nothing to draw out of because you had no, you deposited nothing into. When the scripture says, my Yah shall supply all I need according to his, I don't know if y'all caught that, that probably went over y'all head with what I just said. Uh, <laughs> my Yah shall supply all I need according to his, which is good. he was letting us know that listen, he's supplying the need because we got something in the bank. We got some prayer in the bank. We got some fasting in the bank. We got some deliverance in the bank. So henceforth, we're trying to operate. We're trying to operate with spiritual bad credit. And because of the spiritual bad credit, our prayers have been hindered. Our prayers have been amiss because we have no consistency with the Most High Yah. And that's why he said in uh, Romans 12 and 1, he said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of Yahweh, that you present your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, hallelujah, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewance of your mind. Be, be, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewance of your mind. Hallelujah. So we have to understand the reason why we are not receiving the things that we want to receive in prayer is because we're praying a mess. We have spiritual bad credit because there's a disconnect there. 
See, the reason why the scripture says men ought to always pray and not faint is because that praying develops relationship. That praying develops a line of correct, a, 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 a line of credit. That praying develops a connectivity. Hallelujah. Where now there's no buffering taking place in your life. So watch this. So now, so now, Daniel, Daniel, not only did he pray, not only was those that it was in alliance that accused him, put in alliance them, them and their families, and they were devoured by the lion. Watch this, y'all. Not only was that, but guess what? The scripture says this, and this caught my attention. His prayers brought him into a reward that was beyond fathoming. Look what he said there, verse number 28. So Daniel, watch this, y'all, prospered, verse number 28, Daniel 6 and 28. So Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus, the Persian. What are you saying prophetically? I'm saying the only way we're going to make it through this vaccination, through this COVID, through what the government, with the things that are being placed in the line for us, we have to pray. And when we pray, that's what's going to see us through. People are looking for men. I heard brothers tell me, oh, we need a Moses. We don't need no Moshak. We don't need no, which his name is Hanubian. We don't need that. We need the Ruach HaKadosh, the Ruach HaKadosh. We need the Holy Spirit. Because the Ruach HaKadosh is our Moshak, our Moses, our Moshe. The Ruach HaKadosh is the one that will lead and guide us in all truth. And we cannot be led. We cannot be led. We cannot be led unless, watch this, y'all. Unless, unless, unless the Spirit leads us and guides us. Hallelujah. There's many voices out here. Christianity didn't lie to everybody. And guess what? Some of this Hebrew stuff didn't lie to everybody. You got people with forms of Yah denying the power thereof. And because of this, we find ourselves not knowing what to think, not knowing what to believe, not knowing what to follow. But watch this, y'all. When you pray effectively, Yah will give you what you need. The Ruach will lead and guide you where you need to go. Hallelujah. Scripture says, so this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius. And in the reign of Cyrus. And in other words, he was not only delivered, but Yah made a way out of no way, beyond the way, because of his consistently, consistency in prayer. Because of his consistency in prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The devil is alive. The devil is alive. Remember this. Prayer does not determine, effective prayer does not determine your aptitude. Effective prayer determines your altitude. How high you go in the raw Hakadesh. Hallelujah. How high you go. Now, I'm going to show y'all something. Let me break this thing down. Let me break this thing down, and, 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 and I'm, I'm going to get out your way. But I want, I want to break this thing down, because I, I said I didn't want to be on here that long tonight, because I want to get on and get some rest. Um, go to, um, go to um, Romans, the eighth chapter. Romans, the eighth chapter. And then from there, we're going to go from Romans, the eighth chapter. We're going to go to... Um, 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. And then we're going to go from there and close out with Hebrews, the 12th chapter. Again, Daniel didn't just pray, but the word supplication was in the midst. And that word supplication, watch this, y'all. That word Supplication, watch this, y'all, meant that he was earnestly 
in expectation of requesting, pleading, begging, just in the presence of Yah. So there was a connectivity. And, 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 and the men, had they known what their results was going to be, wouldn't have never snitched on Daniel. But the reason why they didn't know, watch this y'all, was because they didn't know what Daniel was praying about. They didn't understand what he was praying. They just saw him praying. They didn't know who he was praying to. And they didn't know what he was praying. You know why? Because Daniel was not praying. In himself, he had gone into an altitude. Y'all stay with me, please, 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 please. I'm almost finished. Y'all get about another 15, 20 minutes. I'm out your way. He had gone into an altitude level. Hallelujah. And it's something when you get into that altitude level, it's something when you get into that altitude realm. Hallelujah. You begin to get into that realm where those around you think you're strange. Those around you think you done lost your mind. Those around you can't understand where you're coming from. Why? Why? They can't understand it. Why? They don't understand it. Why? Because you've now left and gone into an altitude. You know when, watch this show, a plane is in motion and you up there about 10,000 feet in the air and all of a sudden you're on a plane and, and you hear you feel some rocking and shaking and, and the pilot gets on and say, listen, uh, y'all, we having a little bit of turbulence right now, uh, but um, please don't be alarmed. Keep your seatbelt, put your seatbelts on because we're going to go up to a higher altitude. <laughs> We can't go to a high. Yeah, yeah, it's turbulence right here and where we are right now. But guess what? We're going to go up to a higher altitude because guess what? We, we, we can go to a level where we get me up above the turbulence, up above the confusion, up above the tribulation, up above the things that is troubling us. How do we we got to go into another altitude. And that's what y'all spoke to me this morning. He said, listen, yeah, he woke me up this morning. I, I, I didn't get caught up in the, the terminus of the anxiety was terminus. But guess what? We began to pray and we began to go up to another altitude. Hallelujah. Another altitude. And guess what? In that altitude, the altitude is like no other because no, 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 no terminus can get up there. No confusion can get up there. Nothing can shake you up there. Why? Because you've gone into another realm. Teach today, y'all. Hallelujah. Teach today, y'all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why, that's why the truth is said, the king, he, he told Daniel, Daniel told King, he said, listen, oh, king, live forever. Live forever, king. No, you ain't bothering me. Nothing you're saying is bothering me. Nothing you're saying is troubling me. No, I ain't worried about dying because guess what? I've gone into another altitude. I've gone into another level. I've gone up beyond, hallelujah, where the turbulence, where the confusion, where the ignorance cannot bother me. Hallelujah. Why? Because now my prayer has not determined my aptitude. It's now taking me into a higher altitude. Teach today, y'all. Hallelujah. Altitude. Above ignorance. Above foolishness. This is a spiritual matter. Hallelujah. Above. So now, your prayer has to determine your altitude. And when you get into the level of being in a, in a higher altitude, you'll find yourself in the tefillia, in the midst of, of you, uh, of your etua, in the midst of your areteo, uh, in the midst of your etua. Uh, in Hebrew, you, you find yourself in another level. So now you, you may not understand uh, or you may not be in a position where you're able to etu, or understand your etu, or understand your areteo, which means understanding what you're praying. You don't know if you're requesting uh, or, or favor or you're asking a question. Because why now? You have have reached into another altitude, altitude, to the point where, to the point where, you don't even know what to pray for. Watch this, y'all. Watch this, watch this, y'all. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. The scripture says here. The scripture says this. Scripture says this. Watch this, watch this. Says scripture says here. Romans eight. Romans eight. Romans eight. Romans eight. Romans eight. 
Scripture says here, verse number 15. Let's start at 15. For ye have not received the, the, the spirit, the rock of bondage, again to fear. But you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Hallelujah. I'm looking for the scripture. I'm sorry, y'all. The word of scripture says where it says, for when we don't know what to pray, somebody help me out. When we don't know what to pray, the spirit itself make intercession for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, verse number 26. Verse number 26. Romans 8, 26. Watch this, y'all. When you go into altitude mode, above the turbulence, above the confusion, above all these things that are troubling you, watch this. Scripture says, verse 26, likewise, the Rawak, the Spirit, also help our infirmities. Watch this. For when we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the spirit, the Rawak, the invisible presence of Yah, the invisible presence of Yah. For when we know not what we should pray as we ought, the spirit itself, watch this, make intercession for us with groanings, watch this, which cannot be uttered, with groanings, which are not be uttered. So when you get into effective prayer, it's not traditional. It's not in a format, but now you've gone to altitude. And now, like Daniel did, think about it. If he had been in his flesh, knowing that the law said that if I pray, I could be killed, I could be put into the lion's den, he would have never consistently prayed. Because he's human. Watch this. But because his prayers was not determining his aptitude, his prayers went into another altitude. So he didn't even, he didn't care who heard. He didn't care who saw. He didn't care who was around him. He didn't even care what kind of trouble he could get into. All he knew was that I've now gone into another altitude. And I know in altitude, the, 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 the spirit, the Rarak Hakadash, the presence of Yahweh, began to speak unto him. So when he came down and got before the king, he said, oh, king, live forever. Live forever. No one bless you. Do what you got to do. But I'm not worried because I know that in my altitude of prayer, in my earnings and groanings that cannot be understood, hallelujah, glory to the name of Yah, I know that the lion's mouth is locked up. Hallelujah. In other words, I, I see the trouble in the land. I see the government shut down. I see the things happening around me. I understand what Daniel is in his mind. So y'all cannot be conformed to what's going on. But I got to be transformed in the renewance of my mind. And the avenue of becoming transformed is I have to pray. And not only pray, but I got to pray effectively. Because the word effective means that I'm looking for some results. And we see that he got results. The lion's mouth was locked up. I want you 
y'all to catch that. Please catch this. Please hit, hit us in the Ruach Kakadash. The lion's mouth was locked up. Why? Because his prayer, his prayer had the lock and the key. Why? Because he was interceding with groanings, which can not be uttered. He that searched the hearts know what is the mind of the spirit, the rock, Hakadash, because he make intercession for the believers according to the will of Yahweh. So when you begin to elevate in your prayer, you elevating in the Rarak. And now it's out of your control because now the Rarak HaKadosh is begins to make intercessions. Intercessions with words that cannot be uttered. In other words, there's another language. There's another language. Daniel was in the midst of them speaking another language and they didn't understand the power of that other language because the utterance was taking place. Because if they'd known that, they would have never gone and snitched on Daniel and lost their life, lost their children's life, lost their wives' life. So now there's another language that takes place. Watch this, y'all. 1 Corinthians 13. Show y'all this real quick. I'm almost finished. 1 Corinthians 13. Hallelujah. Watch this. There's another language. See, when you begin to pray, oh glory. See, I had to pray to the point where the altitude, I went off into another altitude. My language changed. Ah, glory. I wasn't speaking the same language. I wasn't speaking English no more. Or this broken stuff that we call English. I began to speak another language. Oh, I began to speak another language. And the 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 rock of life began to come and fall upon me. Why? Because my prayer was not sustained in aptitude, but it went up into altitude. Watch this. Though I speak, listen to this, with the tongues of men and Malachians, angels, and have not charity, I become as a sounding breath. The point I want to get on this verse, verse is, though I speak with tongues, with languages, Listen to this. Though I speak, tongues just mean languages. Though I speak, and guess what? You can't just speak, which people do on their own, but that's false stuff. But when you're in the Rawak Hakadash and you're praying in the Rawak Hakadash, again, your aptitude begins to leash loose you. And also, you start to go into altitude. So now, your tongue, your languages of men now becomes in the clarity of. Malachines, angels, hallelujah. Though I speak with the tongue of men and with angels, Malachines. When you become effective in your prayer, you lose sight of where you are, who you are, and all of a sudden the robot cock of death takes over you, hallelujah. Takes over you. You go into another place that's not of this earth. You go into another zone that's not of this earth. Hallelujah. And all of a sudden, you become to the point, you come into an Elohim type zone where everything around you must become subject in the earthly zone because you're now in the Elohim zone. Teach tonight, y'all. Hallelujah. We're not teaching this amongst our Hebrew community because we need the Ra'ah Kakadash. Watch this. Watch this. Where do we go? Go me to Hebrews 12. When we begin to pray in altitude, your language, your language changes. Though I speak with the languages 
of men and with Malachites. Remember, how are you speaking with languages that the Malachites, the angels are in understanding of? Because remember, when you're praying in the Rarak, <laughs> when you're praying in the Rarak, the spirit, when you're praying in the Rarak, you lose control of you. And I don't mean lose control like you lose, ah, blah, 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 you're going crazy. No, I mean, you lose sight. Because remember, there's still decency and there's still order in your house. You lose sight of the distractions that's on the side of you. You, you lose, and there's a focus that comes now. Well, now you enter into another zone another place. Hallelujah. And you can only go to this place by way of elevation in the rock and the spirit. Likewise, the spirit, hallelujah, it makes intercession for us with words that cannot be uttered. Why? Because the words are not of the man's language no more. It's of the Shemayim, the Shemayim, the heavens. Watch this. Hebrews uh, 12 and verse 22. What he said here. And I'm closing out on this. 12 and 22. He says this. But you are coming to Mount Sinai. When? When have you come into Mount Sinai? You come into Mount Sinai not when you come acknowledgeable of you being a Hebrew, not when you become acknowledged of you, uh, 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 you knowing his name, just knowing his name. You come into Mount Zion. When you elevate in your prayer, Esau sought repentance with tears. But guess what? His prayer was just surface. See, when you begin to elevate in the Rarak Hakadesh in prayer, Psalms 35, I ain't going to read that. Y'all read it when you get a chance. Becomes your shield, your protection, and your weapon. See, now, when we start to pray in a Rarak, not in self. Remember, Rarak means spirit, and spirit means invisibility. So now, when it says living in the rock, praying in the rock, when he says that, watch this, he's letting us know that we're moving no longer in the physicality. Teach today, y'all. I hope y'all getting this tonight. You're no longer moving or operating in the physicality, but you're now moving in the invisibility. Huh? That's why I said eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered in the hearts of men the things that Yahweh has prepared for us. But it is revealed unto us by the Rorak, yea, the deep things of Yah. Why? Because everything, the deep things of Yah is in the invisible. The things that we don't see. Huh? And henceforth, our faith becomes on steroids. So now, when we're praying in the Rorak, we're praying to the point that sometimes we may run out of words. Sometimes we may not know what to say. And we may crowd out our father. We may go into different tongues and different languages. Why? Because we now enter into Mount Sinai. Into the city. I'm in Hebrews 12 and 22. Of the living Elohim, Elohika, into the Shimeimli, the heavenly Jerusalem. And listen to this. And to an innumerable company of Malachians, angels. Though I speak with the tongues of men and what? Angels. So when you pray in the invisible, in the rock, and you, your prayer takes on altitude, way above 
chapter 2. Watch this. Now you find yourself in the new Jerusalem. In the presence of the Most High Yah. <laughs> Let me read it again. In the presence of the Most High Yah. In Mount Zion. City of the living Elohim. Heavenly Jerusalem. To a numerable company of Malachim's angels. Watch this. To the general assembly. And condition chosen. Of the firstborn. Which are written. In the Shemiel. And to. Yahweh. The judge of all. The spirits of just men. Made perfect. And to. Yahweh Shah, the mediator of the new covenant, to the blood of sprinkling that speak better things than that of Abel. Well, how is this possible? You talking some crazy nonsense. Well, let me ask y'all a question. And this to you Christians and to you doubters, you Hebrew um, scribes and Pharisees. Let me ask you a question. When y'all can, James, and Yachanan, John. Did not Yahweh take them up to a mount <laughs> that was transfigured, huh? Did not he take them into a mountain that was transfigured? And when they came down, they said, it is good for us to be here, huh? And then that they said, listen, we got to make three temples. One for Moshe, one for Elijah, and one for Eliyah, and one for Yahweh So don't tell me that Yahweh can't take you off into the spirit, into the invisible realm. Huh? Don't tell me he can't do that. And if you're not understanding this, then that means that you're living in an aptitude level. And not an altitude level. When you pray, you begin to pray. And if your language change, when your language change, not if your language, but when your language change, you begin to speak in other languages, other tongues. You'll know you're in the realm of Yah. In the company of innumerable angels. Though I speak with the tongue of men and angels. Why? Because I'm in the company now. The reason I'm speaking out of the tongues of men and now I'm speaking with the tongues of angels, Malachians, is because is because yeah, that's right, I'm sorry. Peter, James, and James. Thank you, thank you, little sis. Yeah. Kepha, Yachan, and Yachanan. Yeah, I'm sorry. In the company of a new mind. So, though I speak with the tongues of men, the reason why you're speaking with tongues of men and angels is because you leave in tongues of men and you enter into the angel portion. Why? Because now, 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 you're in that secret prayer. Well, how do you know they're in prayer, Moray? How do you know that this is prayer? How do you know that? Well, 1 Corinthians 14 says, when you speak in unknown tongues, you normally do that in your secret closet, right? Now, I know y'all ain't sitting in the closet in the dark, huh? I know you ain't sitting in the dark, in the, in the closet in your dark, <laughs> just looking at yourself in the dark. I hope not. You're going to call the people with the white coats if you are. So, your language changes because you're Aptitude has now taken a higher altitude. You've gone up into a higher level. And when you get to that higher level, you watch and see things around you are going to change to the point where you don't have to ask. You don't have to beg. You don't have to scream and shout automatically, 
automatically. Automatically. Hit me out. Automatically. Before you can ask it, before you can go it, before you can utter it, it's going to come to pass. And this is effective prayer. Effective prayer. Effective prayer. First Peter 3 and 12 says, For the eyes of Yahweh are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto our prayers. When you pray, and you praying in the Ruach Kakadesh, Remember, you're not longer, no longer on the earthly realm. You in, you in his, you in his territory. You can have a million babies in a room, and a mother knows his child's cry, know her child's cry. Likewise with Yahweh Shah. Likewise with Yahweh. You could be amongst the earth of over 73 billion people. But when you in the raw Kakadash, when you're praying in the altitude, hallelujah. When you're praying even in tongues, hallelujah. hallelujah You'll find yourself. The most high hears your cry. He knows where you are. He knows where you stand. We have to pray in the Ruach HaKadosh. The spirit, the Rawak, makes intercession for us, which earnings, groanings, that cannot be understood. Hallelujah. Sometimes you, you get to that level of that altitude, you start speaking in tongues, you don't know what you, you don't even know what you're saying. But the raw Kakadash does. It's making intercession for you. Huh? With groanings, with languages that cannot be understood. Hallelujah. We must know that he's able. We must know that he will answer prayers. My last scriptures before I be, as we go is this. In Acts, and I'm not going to go there. You can read it. it you, you can read it when you get a chance. Acts 16, 25 through 30. In Acts, they were in prison. And at midnight, effective prayer went forth to the point where the result of the effective prayer was Peter and them, their Kiefer's grade, 25 through 30, um, minister, there, not only was their cell doors open, but the scripture says everyone that was around them because they prayed effectively in the Rawak HaKadosh, everything that was around them, everyone that was around them, guess what? Their prison doors was open also. What are you saying? Then when we start praying effectively, not only will we be delivered, but everyone that comes in our path will be delivered also. Hallelujah. Everyone that comes in our path will be delivered also. And that's why Yahweh is saying that to us. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to the name of Yah. That's why he's saying that to us right now as we speak. If my people, Yisrael, which are called by my name, Yahweh, shall humble yourselves and pray and seek my face and turn from your wicked ways, then will I hear from the Shemayim and I will forgive their sin. And I will hear, heal their land. We don't need a vaccination in the midst of this plague. We need 
effective prayer. We need people that ain't afraid to go up into the Shemaya. Shemaya. And even if you lose your native language, hallelujah, and begin to speak with angels, the, the tongue, the languages of, of the Malachians, we need somebody that's not afraid, hallelujah, that's not afraid to go beyond religion, whether it's Hebrewism or Christianity. We need people that need to, 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 to know how to go and effectively pray. Hallelujah. Because he said when we start effectively praying, that's what he said. Verse 15. We always quote 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, but verse 15 says, Now, mine eyes shall be opened. And my ears, whose ears? Yahweh, the Most High, Roha, Rafa, Nisi, El Elyon, Aya, Asha, Aya. Now my eyes will be open. And my ears attentive unto the prayers made in this place. At that time, it was the physical temple of Yahweh. And now, remember, there's a transfer from the, Yah from the Hebraic over to the Yahweh. The temples are no longer physical. But you are the temples of the Most High. So inside of your temple, men are to always pray and not faint. Romans 12 says, pray without ceasing. Hallelujah. Last scripture, Philippians 4, 6 and 7. Be careful, be worried, be anxious. Don't have no anxiety for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, remember, asking earnestly, requesting earnestly, even begging, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto Yahweh. And the peace of Yah, which pass all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through the Messiah. The Hamashiach, Yahawashiach, Hamashiach, hallelujah. Let us not lose the power of the prayer in Matthew 6, 9 through 13. Our father, Yahweh, which are in the Shemiel, hallowed is thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. In earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Now, I quoted that because. There's so much of a breakdown in that prayer. Our Father, we're recognizing Yahweh. We recognize El Yel Shaddai. We recognize Yahweh Yahweh, Yahweh Roha, our Father. He's our Father. He's in the Shemiah. Hallowed is his name. Holy, sanctified, set apart is his name. Did that kingdom come? Y'all get us ready for your kingdom. Let us be in position for your kingdom. Thy kingdom come, that will be done. Huh? Let us be ready to sit in your throne when you return back. Let us be, 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 be worthy to sit at your table and teach the 12 tribes of Yisrael. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Not my will no longer, but your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. That word, not my will no more. I surrender. That will be done in earth as it is in the Shemiah. Psalms 37 and 5 said, Commit thy way unto Yahweh, and he shall bring it to pass. If you surrender your way to do it his heavenly way, he'll bless you in your prayers. Your prayers will be effective. Thy will be done. Give us this day. 
our daily bread. Why? Because you said, and Dawi said, I've never, I've been old. I'm old. I was young. Now I'm old. I haven't seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed begging bread. You said in Philippians 4 19, you will supply our need according to your riches and glory. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us of our sins, our debt, our trespasses, as we forgive those that have trespassed against us. How many times in a day are we supposed to forgive each other? One time, two times? No, scripture says 70 times seven. Shame on you, pastors and leaders that perpetrate non-forgiveness. Your prayers is in vain. In fact, most of them don't pray anyway. When they open up and when they close down. Watch this. And if they pray, they pray traditionally. Forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. In other words, Father, forgive me as I forgive others. Ephesians 4.32 says, be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as Yahweh, for Yahweh shall I say, have forgiven you. Colossians 3 and 12, 13 says, put on therefore as the elect chosen of Yahweh, holy and beloved mouths of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, forgiving one another. If any man have a fight, a quarrel, or fall down, or fall out, Against each, against each other. Even as the Messiah forgave you, so forgive ye also. If you forgive men not their trespasses, neither will your heavenly Father forgive you your trespasses. You got many people following leaders who are operating that's not even forgiven of Yah because they don't know how to forgive others. Egotistical, narcissistic because they don't have forgiveness in their hearts. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us of our debts and we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My last verse, Jude 1 and 24. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. Why? Do you affect the prayer? And to present you faultless before the presence of the exceeding joy to the only wise, Yah, our Savior, be glory and majesty and dominion and power both now and forever. When you pray unto him, in him, leaving aptitude and going into altitude, you will find yourself in the midst of effective prayers. Father, we thank you tonight for the move of the Rarak HaKadosh. We thank you for everything that was spoken. Hallelujah. We thank you for everything, revelation, every rhema that you gave us, O oh Yah. Even as we was opening these things up, O oh Yah, you were speaking, O oh Yah. And we told thy Yah, Father, we pray tonight that you continuously move upon us in a very special way. Our hearts, our minds, our souls. Purify us in every essence of the word. Every sin, every iniquity, every thought, every word that is not like you that we've spoken. Please have mercy upon us, O oh Yah. Hallelujah! According to your loving kindness. According to your tender mercies. We ask you to continually move in our lives, O oh Yah. Not by might, nor by power, but by the Rawak Hakadash, the Rawak Hakadash, the Holy Spirit, oh Yah. Please, Yah, we ask this in your holy name. Build us up where we belong. Strengthen us. Make us whole. Help us to be vessels ready at the return of your house, Yah Hamashiach. Help us today. These things we do pray for. Again, remember our brother Dion Jackson. Remember those that are dealing with COVID. Remember those in the hospital rooms. Remember those with underlining conditions. Father, remember them today. 
Whatever your will is, let it be done all day, every day, and no other kind of way. And we will be so careful this evening to give your name praise, give your name glory, give your name honor, because you're worthy of all the praise. And we say, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, y'all, please let the words of our mouths, meditations of our hearts, be acceptable in our sight. Oh, yah, our strength and our redeemer. And we say, hallelujah. Oh, glory to the name tonight. Y'all bless y'all tonight. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. It won't work. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. It won't work. Y'all will do what he said he will do. He's not a man that he should lie. It won't work. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. It won't work. Hallelujah. Thank you, Yah. Thank you, Yah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Yah. Thank you, Yah, tonight. May Yah continually bless you all tonight. Bless you all tonight. Praise Yah. No weapon formed against us shall prosper it won't work hallelujah 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 oh glory yeah you're welcome in this place yeah you're welcome in this place yeah you're welcome in this place have your way Oh, glory. Thank you, Yah. Move by your spirit, oh, Yah. In this place. Move by your spirit. In this place. Move by your spirit. In this place. Have your way. Yah, bless you all tonight. I ain't gonna hold y'all no longer. No horse in my voice. But Yah, you're welcome. In this place, oh yeah, you're welcome. In this place, yeah, you're welcome. In this place, have your way. Oh, glory. Y'all bless you all tonight. Have a blessed evening. You too. We'll see you on tomorrow. Actually, we're gonna. We, I'm not sure if we're gonna be on tomorrow. I'm not sure we're going to be on tomorrow because I might need a little rest. Hallelujah. Yeah, you're welcome in this place. Yeah, you're welcome in this place. Yeah, you're welcome in this place. Have your way. Move by your spirit in this place. Oh, move by your spirit in this place. Move by your spirit in this place. Have your way. The scripture says, and they sung a song and they departed. We say, y'all bless you all tonight. Y'all be with you all. Yeah, you're welcome, even when we depart from this place. In this place, yeah, you're welcome. In this place, yeah, you're welcome. In this place, have your way. Y'all bless you all. We see you tomorrow. Or if we don't see you tomorrow, we'll see you on Shabbat. I'll let you all know. I'll send out a, um, a notice. Y'all bless you all. Have a great evening on purpose. Shalom, everybody.